In part two of this series, we saw how geometry can be used to calculate the drop from the tangent line intersecting the Earth at point A to the dropped Earth at point B. In part three of this series, we saw how trigonometry can also be used to calculate that drop. These findings are useful for people studying the shape of the Earth as it allows us to compare what we see across distances with what we ought to see if the Earth is a giant ball with a radius of 3,959 miles as we are told by NASA. We also found that the results given by these geometric and trigonometric equations accord with the results given by Dubay's formula, i.e. 8 inches times the mile squared. In part 4 of this series, we will see that although Dubay's formula is a very accurate approximation of the drop of the Earth from a tangent line intersecting the Earth at the point of the observer, it is not appropriate for the kinds of flat Earth experiments which some people are using it for. Put simply, the four equations considered in parts 2 and 3 of this series all assume the tangent from the Earth at the point of the observer. Under such an assumption, the horizon is at the point of the observer and so this does not need to be factored into calculations. However, this assumption does not generally work in practice because even on the ball Earth model, the Earth is not perfectly spherical. There are waves on water, bumps on the ground, etc. Therefore, we cannot get our eyes or cameras to observe into the distance from literal surface level. As soon as the observer begins rising from literal surface level, the angle of observation begins to change. The higher from the surface level one rises, the less significant the obstruction of view caused by the curvature of the Earth. Another way of thinking about this is that at literal surface level, the drop and the obstruction caused by the curvature of the Earth are identical. Above literal surface level, the observer will be able to see some of the area which has dropped, although there may still be a measurable and predictable amount of obstruction. Therefore, it is useful to distinguish between the drop and the obstruction. As the observer rises from literal surface level, the drop from the tangent across a given distance remains the same, but the obstruction of the observer's view decreases. To illustrate, imagine a distance of 36 miles between the observer at point A and the object being observed at point B. We have already shown that the Earth ought to have dropped away by 864 feet from the tangent line intersecting the Earth at point A. If the Earth were perfectly spherical and we could somehow view across the Earth from literal surface level, we ought not be able to see any object 36 miles away less than 864 feet tall. But this does not work in practice. Even a relatively calm bay will have little waves that make it impractical to view, let alone film, from literal surface level. Therefore, observations are generally made from several feet above surface level. It can easily be seen that this therefore reduces the area of point B unable to be observed due to the curvature of the Earth owing to the change in angle. The observer is no longer looking across at the same tangent in practice as he would be in theory. A person relying on Dubay's formula could, wittingly or unwittingly, believe he is seeing a lack of curvature when in fact he has calculated a drop that is not commensurate with the expected obstruction. Clearly then, a new formula is required, one which calculates the obstruction by factoring in the height of the observer as well as the drop. Before we go further, there is some more basic mathematics we ought to revise. We covered some basic algebra in part 2, including expanding brackets, where it was explained that the expression 3, open bracket y plus t close bracket, means the same thing as 3 times, open bracket y plus t close bracket, which means the same thing as 3y plus 3t. Now on to squaring brackets. If we say that something within brackets is to be squared, we are saying that whatever is in the brackets is to be multiplied by identical brackets. Then we simply multiply each term in the second bracket by each term in the first. For example, take the expression open bracket a plus 2 close bracket, all to the power of 2. Any term squared means that term multiplied by itself, so then you multiply each term in the first bracket by each term in the second, and then you simplify, and you're left with a squared plus 4a plus 4. Next up is what is known as the product property of square roots. Put simply, the square root of ab equals the square root of a times the square root of b. 
To prove this, suppose that a equals 4 and b equals 9. You have your rule, square root of ab equals square root a times square root b. So that would mean that the square root of 4 times 9 equals the square root of 4 times the square root of 9, and indeed 6 equals 6. To devise a suitable formula for calculating the obstruction, we also need to know how to calculate the distance between an observer and the horizon, taking into account the observer's height. The higher up the observer, the further away the horizon will be. Again, we can use the Pythagorean theorem with a equals distance to the horizon, b equals the radius of the Earth, and c equals the radius of the Earth plus the height of the observer. We have our starting equation, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, then subtract b squared from both sides, take the square root of both sides, substitute in a equals d, b equals r, c equals r plus h, then expand the brackets, r squared and minus r squared cancel one another out, which leaves us with the equation d equals the square root of 2rh plus h squared. Now, for the purpose of an approximation formula, we can drop the h squared because it's going to be insignificant compared to the other values within the formula. And that leaves us with the formula, the distance to the horizon of d equals the square root of 2rh. When we say that h is insignificant compared to the radius, consider a person standing 1,000 feet above surface level. This would equal 0.19 miles, which when squared would equal less than 0.04 miles compared to the radius of 3,959 miles. Since most practical applications of this formula will be used much closer to surface level than 1,000 feet, you can see why it is acceptable for us to ignore the h squared component of the equation and simplify to d equals the square root of 2rh. This means that the formula we are now using is technically an approximation. For the reasons already stated, it is sufficient. With this equation, we can now determine a formula to give the expected obstruction created by the Earth for a given height. We know that the distance between an observer and the lowest observable height of an object in the distance will be equal to the distance to the horizon for point A plus the distance to the horizon for point B at the lowest observable height of point B. Therefore, D, the distance to the lowest observable height of the object being observed, can be calculated with the following formula. D equals the square root of 2rh plus the square root of 2r large h, with small h representing the height of the observer and large h representing the lowest observable height of the object in the distance. With this equation then, we will know the variables d, r, and small h, and we are trying to find the value of large h. Now all we need to do is to rearrange the equation to isolate large h and then plug in the constants to give a working equation. So we have our starting equation, d equals the square root of 2r small h plus the square root of 2r large h. Because both of the terms on the right hand side are dealing with miles, we can divide by 63,360 to convert miles into inches. Now we can set a new value, q, to equal 2 over 63,360 to make the equation simpler. Then sub q into the equation, subtract the square root of qhr from both sides, square both sides, expand the brackets on the right hand side, divide both sides by qr, expand the right hand side, apply the product property of square roots, then set 1 over qr to equal 8. We know this because 1 divided by open bracket, open bracket 2 over 63360 close bracket, 3959 close bracket, equals 8.00202, or close enough to 8 for this approximation. Back to the equation then, we simplify the first term on the right hand side, then we substitute in the values, and to understand those values, we'll look at that particular term. If 2d square root q square root h square root r over qr, we know that 1 over qr equals 8, 
we can substitute in the known values of Q and R, which leaves us with a simplified expression of 5.66 root H D, which means that putting all of this into the equation, we're left with large H equals 8 D squared minus 5.66 square root of H D plus H. This equation can be expressed as the minimum observable height of an object at point B can be calculated as eight times the distance between point A and point B squared minus 5.66 times the square root of the height of the observer times by the distance again plus the height of the observer. In other words, the value of H will be the amount of obstruction. To put it into practice, we will apply it to a distance of 36 miles with an observer's height of six feet. Example, large H equals eight times 36 squared minus 5.66 times the square root of 72 times 36 plus 72, which equals 8,711 inches, which equals about 726 feet. If we compare this to the other formulas covered in parts two and three of this series, we can see a significant difference. They all gave a drop calculation of 864 feet, which is almost 20% greater than the amount of obstruction. The greater the height of the observer, the more pronounced the variation becomes. At a height of 12 feet, the obstruction is 672 feet. Dubay's formula gave a drop value almost 30% greater. At a height of 18 feet, the obstruction is 620 feet, Dubay's formula gave a drop value almost 40% greater. Clearly it can be seen that for even relatively modest heights of the observer, the formulas considered earlier, two geometric, two trigonometric, plus Dubay's formula, are simply not appropriate. In conclusion, it must be made absolutely clear that this series is not suggesting that the drop formulas are not in and of themselves accurate. Parts two and three of this series have already demonstrated that Dubay's formula is amazingly accurate for calculating the drop, even out to distances well beyond those for which it is typically used. As an approximation of the amount of drop from the tangent at point A to the Earth at point B, Dubay's formula remains a terrific and useful tool. However, there is a difference between drop and obstruction, and some people appear to be using the drop formula when they are actually observing or measuring obstruction. It is hoped that this series has demonstrated that there is a significant difference between obstruction and drop, and the obstruction formula of large H equals 8D squared minus 5.66 square root little hd plus h will become more popular amongst neo-flat earthers from this point forward. I would like to pass on my sincere gratitude to a YouTuber named 5Red Pairs for his assistance in the making of this video series. His video on this topic inspired me to make this series in the first place. On several occasions I contacted him regarding the calculations in his video and he generally responded within hours. I understand that some people see the Flat Earth Renaissance as a battle between Ball Earthers and Flat Earthers and treat those on the other side like enemies. To me this is a juvenile and self-defeating attitude for anybody to have. Although he's apparently a Ball Earther himself, Five Red Pairs has been nothing but a gentleman to me and has done more to personally assist me in my search for knowledge and truth than 95% of so-called flat earthers on YouTube combined. This is how collaboration is supposed to work and if you only deal with those who already agree with you, you are neither a researcher nor a truth seeker, but a follower. And my channel was never intended for the followers. They are useless to themselves, to others, and to the greater cause for truth. I would also like to say thanks to my friend Lucas for looking over the first draft of this series. He wasn't too happy with me for removing the age squared from the distance to horizon approximation formula, being the mathematical purist he is, but hopefully in time he can forgive me. The text and slides on which this video series was based will be made available for free from my website johnlebond.com in the coming days. I strongly encourage all genuine researchers to review and familiarize themselves with this material. Not only may it assist them, but it is likely to assist me too. All constructive criticism will be greatly appreciated and any errors rectified as soon as possible. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this series. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them underneath these videos on YouTube 
and I will endeavor to reply to them as soon as I can. If you enjoyed the series, please share it with friends and family. And be sure to subscribe to my channel. I have plenty of new material coming soon, so stay tuned. Cheers.